Dr. Dyslexia Dude is taking the neurodiverse universe by storm with the world's first dyslexic superhero modeled after creator Sean Robinson and his own struggles with schooling and behavior. Today, Sean is a senior research associate in Wisconsin's Equity and Inclusion Laboratory, but his journey getting here wasn't easy. My journey in life is probably different than a lot of people, particularly in, within the context of special education. Um, I was in special ed my entire K-12 academic you know, journey. Um, again, I came from a single parent household. My mother raised me. Um, she always knew I had a lot of potential, had a lot of great teachers, coaches that helped me. Uh, but I knew that I was different, not just by my skin, but the fact that I couldn't read. And so being in school, not knowing how to read, you know, it's really uh, messing my head psychologically, you know, put me out the game. And so um, not being able to read, uh, I think, um, stem a lot of internal anger, um, outburst, and then I found myself getting into a lot of uh, unnecessary trouble. With continued problems in school, Sean's mother had him tested academically by a professor at the University of Wisconsin, where he first found out he was dyslexic. He just said, you know what, Sean? He came out just was very blunt about it. He said, you were one of the most illiterate kids I've ever met in my life. He's like, you have dyslexia. And I'm like, what is that? Like, I had no idea what it was. My mom, my, uh, my mom didn't, I didn't know. And he said, but you know what, you have a gift. You have a gift that uh, the world needs to to, to see that you've been failed by the, by the academic system. It's not your fault, you're hurting, you're in pain, I can see it, he said, but if you trust me, um, he said, he said if, you, if you trust me, I will teach you how to read and it would, it would change your life forever. And once he was inspired, um, he just started to absorb everything about this because a little bit of progress got him to see that there could be more progress and more progress. Sean began the specialized program after high school and went on to get his undergrad, master's, and PhD in language and literacy, an 18-year venture. Uh, it's because it's just one man who changed my life, taught me how to read, gave me hope, um, taught me to appreciate language, taught me how to appreciate knowledge from books. I just, I just took off, I just ran, I took, I took the ball and I, I just went and I never looked back. And some of, some of me just told me I wanted to get more education. I wanted to more, learn more about dyslexia. I wanted to be able to help uh, kids who not just look like me, but experience the hardship of not knowing how to read and let them know that there's hope at the other end. And so I went and um, enrolled in a PhD program where um, I was in there for seven years. Um, I had uh, two professors that actually failed me and told me that uh, that program wasn't for me that I should do something different. Same thing I heard when I was a little kid, same narrative, and so I just pushed forward like a little train, choo-choo, you know, I just kept going, and the time I looked up, uh, it was 18 years straight school after high school, just 18 years of uh, discipline, you know, uh, trials and tribulations. In an effort to reach kids like himself, Sean created his alter ego, Dr. Dyslexia Dude, and he and his wife, Inshira, chronicled his journey in graphic novels. I just think about a way of being creative, about reaching uh, and disseminating to a wider audience. And so then uh, my wife and I were sitting down one day, I said, you know, I think we should um, turn um, my lived experiences and my work into graphic novels. We had our illustrator, Brandon Hadnot, you know, another person that is part of our team that I really, uh, my wife and I really couldn't have done this without him. And so. Um, we wrote the first one and it just took off. And then we wrote the second one and it just took off. And then the third one just came out uh, last October. And, uh, you know, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback from teachers, parents, kids about the value of the book and how it uh, empowers kids and um, really gives them hope. So that's, that's what we want to do. Part of what is also so special and unique about the Dr. Dyslexia Dude books is that he's also, you know, created a character that um, really is himself. I mean, this is his experience. Um, and, you know, it is a character that represents, um, you know, a minority group and, and often uh, minorities are not represented in books and certainly not as superheroes. And um, so I think that that's something that's really cool and special about it too, across the board, because I think dyslexia is a superpower. Um, so I love for all kids that they can see that. And I think also it's really important 
um, that we have somebody sharing that story and a powerful, empowering story in um, communities that aren't getting to hear that. Sean travels the country in his superhero costume, speaking in schools and conferences, telling his story from special ed to PhD, and encouraging kids that it's okay to be different and follow their dreams. It takes people like Sean to change the climate, make dyslexia uh, just, you know, just not something that's so misunderstood. People now are speaking about dyslexia. People are talking about his books. And I think, uh, that's a very, very important part. He's become a popular speaker. I never thought I'd do a speech with him, uh, with a with, with him, any person in a superhero suit. But you know, that's what he's willing to do to make this work. And what he's doing it for is for the good of the people. So we're just trying to, you know, make reading enjoyable for kids. We want them to be able to pick up a book and on the standpoint of how we learn to read and the value of reading to learn and just feel empowered when they, when they open the book and not be scared. Um, you know, if, if wearing this outfit can inspire um, some kid to be creative, then I've done my job. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with wearing this. If it you know, gets them to believe in themselves and to think about the imagination of opening up a book and maybe being an author or something or, you know, just following their dreams. So um, that's really, the purpose of why we do this. With a world of difference, I'm Cindy Peterson.